bless Abraham. God promised to bless. He never blessed him. Abraham was blessed by a man, a priest, Melchizedek. When Abraham came from the slaughter of kings with the offering and gave pie to Melchizedek, Melchizedek is saying, now you are talking. He can bless you now. Blessed be the God, the possessor of heaven and earth. You are blessed. The priest has to utter utterances, child. This is how God has decided. You cannot change it. Hallelujah. Melchizedek, the priest of the Most High, it is Jesus himself who had to clothe himself as a man to come and contact a man and bless another man. When you read Hebrews chapter 7, you say, This Melchizedek, without father, without mother, without beginning of days, without ending of days, he is the king of Salem, meaning the king of peace. Jesus himself. When you go down there, he says, here, men who die receive the, the, the tithe, but there, the one whom it is accounted that he lives forever received it. So tithe he received here, and tithe is received there. Ah, you don't understand. Let me let me go there. Let me go there now. The Bible says, and Gideon went in and made ready a kid and a living cage of an ephah of flour. The flesh he put in the basket and he put the broth in a pot and brought it unto unto him under the ark and presented it. And the angel of God said unto him, Take the flesh and the unleavened cakes and lay them upon this rock and pour out the broth. And he did so. The rock there is Jesus. Jesus Christ. Jesus is the rock of ages. He is the rock that was giving water to the children of Israel in the land, in the, in the wilderness when they were moving. Jesus is the rock. And he, he here is being told, put your offering upon the rock. So when you bring your sacrifice, don't see a man. The Bible says there were these three guys. They were given talents. One was given five, another two, another three, and, they, and, 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 and another one. So the one that was given five went and threatened and he increased them, they became ten. And the one that was given to the same, but the one that received one, he said, I know you are a heard man. He was seeing a man, he never saw God. Yeah. I know you are a heard man. You reap where you have not sown. As long as you are seeing a man, you have missed it. Amen. You have missed it. Let me go quickly to the point here. Verse 23, and the Lord said unto him, Peace be unto thee, fear not, thou shalt not die. Verse 25, verse 25, and it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Take thy father's young bullock, even the second bullock of seven years old, and throw down the altar of Baal that thy father has, and cut down the grove that is by it, and build an altar unto the Lord thy God upon the top of this rock, in the order, in the ordered place, and take the second bullock and offer a burnt sacrifice with the wood of the grove which thou shalt cut down. Then Gideon took ten men of his servants and did as the Lord had said unto him. And so it was because he feared his father's household and he made you, you discover that he feared his father's household, which means the enemy was in his father's household. introduces Gideon to his destiny. You are a great man. Don't die like this. You are a man who should be respected. Don't end like this. You are a man of substance. Gideon, discover yourself. Then he says, but all this that I'm talking about has been and what has covered the prophecies you have received different prophecies how colorful your life is how decorated your life is but they never come to manifestation don't say the prophets are liars prophets are not liars they only speak what God is speaking but there is something that
bearers of a shadow of the prophecies. Prophecies are not manifesting. The world are not manifesting because there is a power in your father's house. There is a power in your mother's house that has said, let them prophesy the way they want. Let them declare the way they want. But you will amount to nothing. Gideon was told, go back, Gideon, into your father's house. There is an altar, and that altar is not just an altar that has affected your father's house alone. The altar has affected the entire nation of Israel. In your father's house, there is an altar that was raised, and this altar was not raised empty. The altar was raised with the sacrifice, and the altar was raised with the utterances. Please, when you approach this altar, don't approach it empty handed because this is the altar that has gotten hold of your destiny. This is the altar that is holding your marriage. This is the altar that is holding your finances. This is the altar that is holding your colorful life. Go, take a sacrifice and go to that altar and bring the altar down. After you have brought the altar down, raise another altar. I said, the child of God, an altar is the place of answer. An altar is the place of an answer. And I am here to declare to you, whatever has been with hell that you are supposed to enjoy, receive an answer. An answer to your marriage. An answer to your job. An answer to your relationship. An answer, an answer. I declare an answer. I declare an answer. In your career, receive an answer. I am at the altar of God. In your health, receive an answer. In your life that is troubled, an answer has come. And he blew a trumpet and 
Ethiopia was gathered after him, and he sent messengers throughout all Manasseh who also were gathered after him, and he sent messengers unto Asher and unto Zebulun and unto Naphtali, and they come to meet him, the man who was an entity of yesterday. Nobody could listen to him when he speak, but because whatever was holding his greatness has been brought down. Whatever was holding his star has been brought down. Whatever was holding his career has been brought down. Whatever was holding his marriage has been brought down. Now the man blows a whistle. The spirit of God is all over him. The very people from his household of Manasseh that had rejected him, that counted him as an entity, when they blew a whistle, they come to him. Those who rejected you are coming back. I say they rejected you, but they are coming back. I say they rejected you, but they are coming back. Don't write any man off. Don't write any woman off. Child of God, don't write anybody off. You don't know what their tomorrow carries. This person is just being for today. father's house that was fighting him but the moment that power was was destroyed the Gideon broke the altar and the realm that was uh, uh, connecting this altar to the calamities that the realm that was sponsoring calamities in the life of Gideon and in the nation of Israel has been suspended that realm has been disconnected now Gideon can enjoy the power and the presence of God the spirit of God is upon him by the anointing of God, you are coming out from the obscurity, you are coming into life. David was a shepherd boy. I said, David was a shepherd boy. But the moment the anointing came upon him, the moment power fell upon him, David becomes another man. He goes to the house of Saul and he just plays onto an instrument and demons have to leave Saul because there is an anointing upon him. There is an anointing of a karma that has come over you. I say there is an anointing of an overcomer that has come over you. You 
Spirit.